So, um, on here, all right, so polynomial functions, we now know what a polynomial function is. Basically, it's when you've got a function with variables and their exponents are integers, right? Starting zero, going up, and so on. Um, the leading coefficient is basically the coefficient of the variable with the greatest exponent, right? And we've said this over and over and over now. Um, a constant function has a degree of zero. A linear function has a degree of one. Quadratic function has a degree of two, right? We know this. A polynomial function, right, when it's graphed, has a graph which is nice and smooth, right? It's like a roller coaster that is a smooth ride. So like this one, for example, right? <clears throat> there are no gaps, no corners, right? Um, so this is a polynomial. These two are examples of things that are not polynomials. So if you take a look at this one, this has a gap, right? Um, that has a jump discontinuity, definitely not a polynomial function. This one has a corner, definitely not a polynomial function. Even though it's continuous, it is not a polynomial function because of that corner, okay? So like an absolute value is not a polynomial function, okay? And again, we know graphs of even degree monomial functions look like, you know, a quadrat uh, parabola. Graphs of odd degree monomial function looks like the graph of an x cubed. Okay, so graphing these. Do we need to go over again how to graph these? Are you guys okay? Should we go over them? Okay, so this one, we know the vertex is at zero, zero. And again, same as always. When I go over one, I go up like x to the six. So one to the six times four, so four, okay? Just like we've always done. When you get stuck, just make a table, pick points. Very quickly, this one goes to the right four and up one, and then this is a cubic graph, right? So when I go over one, I go up one, when I go over two, how much would I go up? Eight, right? So, right? Okay. Okay. Leading term test. You guys remember the leading term test? So in algebra two, there is, you know, that horrible notation of like, as X approaches infinity, F of X, right? Horrible. Here, right? We use our, you know, infinity, uh, the limit notation, right? The limit of f of x as x approaches infinity is infinity or whatever. So, leading term test, if n is odd, right? The, the end behavior will be opposite, right? So if A is positive, then the leading, um, then the end behavior will be opposite, right? It will be positive infinity to the right, negative infinity to the left. And then if it's negative, then it's opposite. And then if N is even, remember the end behavior, it's the same. So both ends will be down if A is negative. Both ends will be up if A is positive. We all know this, yes? Okay, let's move on to some bigger and better things. Okay, so here we go. If you have a function, how do we apply the leading term test? This is the leading term here. So the limit of f of x, as x approaches infinity, will be what? 
And then the limit of f of x as x approaches negative infinity will be what? Also positive infinity. Here, what's the leading term? Negative 2x to the fifth. So the limit of f of x as x approaches negative infinity will be what? Infinity. What about the limit of f of x as x approaches positive infinity? <coughs> negative infinity. Fabulous. Okay. More things we know. X-intercept. Yeah, so like plug in a positive number, right? Oh. Yeah. Okay, so x-intercepts are also the same as the x-intercepts of a graph are the zeros of the function or of the graph. They're the roots of the function or the solutions. And to find the x-intercepts, you know, we solve f of x equals zero. We, we all know this, yes? Okay, turning points. You all remember turning points? Okay, so turning points indicate where the graph of a function changes from increasing to decreasing and vice versa, okay? Now, remember, a polynomial function has... Okay, if a, of degree n has at most n real roots, okay, n degree, n real roots, and at most n minus 1 turning points. Okay, so take a look at this. This is the function, 3x to the 6 minus 10x to the 4 and so forth. F will have at mo you know what please don't go ahead of me because it's not about okay don't go ahead of me okay it's not about filling in these pages it's about what i'm telling you about them um so this has six distinct roots right this is the degree and then five turning points right but you see here right it can have at most six roots, but you see here it only has three, right? And it only has three turning points, all right? Okay, so let's take a look here. Okay, state the number of possible zeros. So it has three possible zeros and two possible turning points, right? Okay, so let's... Um, Factor though, how okay? So we're gonna factor at x. When you're solving this, please always set it equal to zero. So x plus four, x plus one, equal to zero. So x equals zero, negative one, negative four. So do you see how here we are? Three of the zeros, all three zeros. Okay. This one, it has four possible zeros and how many turning points? Okay, so this one we're going to factor it and in quadratic form. So it's going to be x squared, right? Minus 5 minus 3. So x squared minus 5 equals 0. x squared minus 3 equals 0. So x squared, what's x? x squared equals 5. x equals plus or minus root 5. And x equals plus or minus root 3. So again, here are the four zeros. This time they're irrational zeros. All right? Because root 5 is irrational. And then here... Not imaginary, irrational. So this one, when you factor, what is this? It's x squared, x squared, and then minus 1, minus 3, right? But this factors more. So 
So x equals plus or minus 1, x equals plus or minus root 3. This also, it would have had four possible zeros, three turning points, and these are the four zeros. Okay? Yeah. That's right, minus one. Mm -hmm. Okay, now take a look. Um, okay, now I'm going to give you another one before we move on. Right? I'm going to give you another one. Let's call that one D. Okay, we're going to make it f of x equal to x squared plus 10x plus 25. Okay, what are the maximum number of zeros here? Two. And turning points? One. Okay, so why don't we solve this? Yeah, so it'll be x plus 5 equal to 0. I'm sorry, x plus 5 squared equal to 0. So x equals negative 5, right? Okay, so we got 1. It had maximum of two zeros. We got 1. So why don't we graph this negative 5 right here. This looks like this. So, okay, so we got 1, 0, 1 turning point, right? But can we take a look at this for a minute? When we had x plus 5 squared equal to 0, that's actually two factors x plus 5 x plus 5 equal to 0 and then from this one we get x equals negative 5 and x equals negative 5 so technically we did get two zeros it's just that they happen to be the same one right so we got one zero but it's repeating we got a repeating zero, right? So that brings us to this. If a function has repeating zeros, we call that the multiplicity. So we say the multiplicity of the function or of the zero is the number of times a zero repeats. So I can say here x equals negative 5 with a multiplicity of two. Now, there is something really special about this multiplicity. If a function has a multiplicity that is even, or if a function has an x-intercept with an even multiplicity, then the graph touches the x-axis at the point of the x-intercept, and then it turns right back around. It does not cross the x-axis, and it does not change sign, just like it happened here. So right here, x equals negative 5 has a multiplicity of 2, which is even. So at negative 5, the graph touches the x-axis, but it turns back around. It doesn't cross the x-axis, and if the graph was positive, it stays positive. It doesn't change the sign. But um, if a function has an x-intercept of odd multiplicity, then it crosses the x-axis, and f of x does change sign at that point. Okay? So when we do the sign chart, remember how we used to do the sign chart? Right? And it's like plus, minus, plus, minus, whatever. So we could get like plus, plus, minus, plus, right? Or like minus, minus, depending on what multiplicities are, okay? All right, so let's move on here. So here, we're going to graph these things. For the following functions, we're going to apply the leading term test. We're going to determine the y-intercept, the zeros, and we're going to graph the function. So let's do it. Okay, so this first one, somebody was nice enough to factor this for us, which is great because we can find the zeros very quickly. What's not so good about it is for the leading term, we have to multiply it back out. But do we have to multiply the whole thing out? 
No, we can just take the leading terms, right? Okay, so let's do the leading term first. So for the leading term, we're just going to take x, 3x, and x squared. That'll be how much? 3x to the what? 4. So limit of f of x as x approaches negative infinity is what? Positive. Boy, Wednesday h period is like... Uh, like flat line, right? Hmm, interesting. It's like nap time. Okay. Okay, so what are the zeros? So zeros, x times 3x plus 1 times x minus 2 squared is equal to 0. So x is 0, x is negative a third. And then x equals 2. Now look, this x equals 2 came from the x minus 2 squared term. Do you see how that term has an even exponent? Because of the even exponent, that has a multiplicity of 2. So whatever the exponent is, that is the multiplicity. Okay, am I making sense? Huh? You have to write it exactly like that. You don't have to write multiplicity of one, but anything other than one, you have to write it. Multiplicity of three, you gotta write it. Multiplicity of 724, you gotta write it. And it's just no math involved, whatever the exponent is. Got it? Okay. It's really not worth losing points over multiplicity. It's like not. That's exactly it. Should we say it a third time? What time symbol? Okay. Okay. I'm the one who gets paid for this, so listen to me. Okay. Okay. I mean, I don't get paid a lot, but I get paid, so listen to me. Okay. Now, why intercept? f of 0, how much? Crickets. 0! Okay. Y-intercept and zeros are always good numbers to choose when you're graphing. Okay, here's what we're going to do here. Okay, here's what we're going to do here. You ready? Okay. So I put little guidelines here because they're going to positive infinity. Okay, so I have the zero, the negative one-third, the two. Okay, here we go. Odd multiplicity means cross the x-axis. Now, you've got to turn back around. Let me make this bigger. Odd multiplicity means cross the x-axis. You've got to turn back around. Turn back around, but you can't cross the x-axis here, and then you got to go back up, right? Now, before I take questions, can we just appreciate the beauty of what we've done here, right? This is just amazing. Now, the question on some of your minds is, how do we know how low the minimum is and how high the maximum is? And the answer is, without calculus, you don't. And it, you, without calculus, you would need some more information. Okay. Right? This is correct. Okay? It's a, well, I mean, you know, it's a pretty good thing, but, like, you just... The location of the minimum and the maximum is between each of these respective points. And then this is it. Okay? This is pretty darn good though. Right? With that, we haven't even touched the calculator, mind you. Okay? All right. Should we move on? Which dot are we talking about? Dude, it's an abbreviation symbol.
I'm very happy. Let's do this one. Oh, look at this one. This one's not factored. Yay. Leading term is negative x to the fourth. So limit of f of x as x approaches negative infinity, negative infinity, limit of f of x as x approaches positive infinity, also negative infinity, okay, zeros. Okay, so negative x to the 4 plus 4x cubed minus 4x squared equals 0. Okay, what should we factor out, guys? Yay, so we get x squared minus 4x plus 4 equals 0. Does this factor? Yeah. Oh, my God, it totally does. It's like x minus 2 squared equals 0. Oh, my God, look at what a beautiful problem I wrote here. So here, x equals 0 multiplicity of 2, I'm not even going to put a dot this time, x equals 2 multiplicity of 2. Wow. <coughs> y-intercept. What's the y-intercept? f of 0 equals what? 0. Let's do this. Okay, so um, n behavior is towards the negative infinities on both sides. So I have one zero at zero, one zero at two. This is legit the most exciting thing I've done all morning. This is so exciting, like so exciting. Okay, whew, okay. So now both have even multiplicities. So when I come up here, do I cross the x-axis? No, now I gotta turn around to hit the other zero. I don't cross, so I got to go back down. But you know what? I got to make it symmetric. Hang on. Hang on. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, it's still not symmetric. Okay, why can't I make this thing symmetric today? I don't know. I'm going to make it pretty. Oh, look at that. Oh, my God. Look at how pretty that is. Look at how pretty that, that is. And again, can we just appreciate the fact that there is literally not a single calculator out like we haven't touched a single calculator and okay 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 like at the start of this period when you walked into class today right did you even imagine that you'd be able to graph an equation like this without even your calculator right so think about your okay compare your present self to yourself 30 minutes ago. Look at how different you are. Like, right? Do you, do you feel different? Do you feel different? Come on. Don't you feel different? You look different to me. It's like you were born. You had your bar mitzvah, your bat mitzvah, and now this, right? This is like the right of path. Like the next thing that's going to happen in your life is you're going to have children. Like this is it. These are the rites of passages in your life, right? Look at this. Look at how far you've come. This better be a good question because you can't bring me down right now. If it's yeah, not so a good so, 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 okay, so, there we go. Good, good, good. If it's about like a period or something or like a multiplication symbol, don't ask that question. Okay, all right, let's do this next problem. Now, okay, let's find the polynomial function of degree n, okay? with only one of the following real zeros. More than one answer is possible. Okay, so these are the zeros. This is n. n is the degree. So you know what the important word in this entire problem is? What the most important word, huh? No. Degree. No. Mm. Okay, now you're literally, it's not the. Function, function, function. You have to write a polynomial function. That means you have to write it as f of x. Just in function notation, it could be r of t, it could be f of x, it could be, I don't know, whatever, v of t, I really don't care. a of r, I really don't care, okay? So now, you want the sum of the exponents to be 4. So one factor is x minus 6. The other factor is x plus 3, okay? 
And then the exponents, you can distribute them how you like. So it could be, for example, two and two, or, you know, it could, <clears throat> you can say like A of R, right? In that case, it would be R minus six, R plus three. And then you could do, for example, like three and one, you know? I really don't care. Okay? All right. Um, so let's take a look at the next. So what is the least degree? Four. Okay, and then the end behavior. Okay, so both are going to negative infinity. Okay, so part B, locate the zeros. So X equals what, negative three, X equals two, x equals 6, that one has a multiplicity of 2. Okay? Oh, wait, you can't. How come it won't show? What happened? Okay. Okay, so now, what happened? Okay, so here we go. So now we have to create a function that fits the graph and the given point. So here we go. So we have y for c. y equals a, okay, remember, so we have a, okay, so what are the factors? x plus 3, x minus 2, x minus 6 squared, because that has a multiplicity of 2. Now, take a look here. We've got this point. This can be your x and y. So now we have to put x and y in here, okay? So y is, what's y? 64 equal to a, and then x is negative 2, so negative 2 plus 3, negative 2 minus 2, negative 2 minus 6 squared. So 64 is equal to a times 1 times negative 4 times 64. Oh, and look, the 64s cancel out. So a is negative 1 over 4. So finally, f of x is equal to a, which is negative 1 over 4, x plus 3, x minus 2, x minus 6, squared, and that is your function. Okay? Okay. Press start.